Now we're going to mount a gobbling turkey, in this case one that's on a limb. Well, I'm having a little bit of trouble with the neck matching up. Uh, not a super good fit here, but between this and this, I think I should be able to just whittle my necking material down uh, to make it fit. Uh, I know some companies, they, it's rounded out more back here where you can use, you know, original necking material. But with this company, they do great heads. But the neck material will, will differ according to what pose it is. Like, I guess this goblin pose, see how the, the insert, see how the insert is a little bit different? And it's probably, it's probably accurate, but for me, it, it makes things a little bit harder. But here I've got neck material, and I'll just cut it down and whittle it down until it fits. And I'll probably go all the way down you know, as far as I can to the body with it like that. Uh, pretty much because of the shape of the insert and thus the shape of the waddles as it was freeze dried. But that's a minor issue. Yeah, between pins and uh, Zappy Gap, which is kind of like a super strong kind of super glue. Um, stronger than regular super glue. I do know that. Uh, I've accidentally got some on my fingers and found out the hard way. But between uh, this and this, I should be able to pin and glue this neck and material to match up with what's on here. And the insert, that way when I take all this out, which I will, um, you know, you can match it up. I did on my flying turkey, it was a perfect match. And I just left the insert in for the most part. I think I cut a little bit of it off. But it's not always a guaranteed a good fit. I've gotten in the habit, and it's a lot less trouble sometimes just to take this out. You know, like maybe stick a knife in there and a screwdriver and pluck it out. It, and it'll come out relatively easy. So that's something I'm debating. I could leave it depending on uh, how good of a fit I got. I haven't decided 100% yet. Have got this where it'll fit up in there, kind of mesh up against the body. And this is, that's what I've got right there. So I think I'll try this. A little bit of this apoglap. Go right along the top of it. There. It don't take long because this apoglap is stout. Uh, stronger than average super glue, which, as you well know, can come in real handy. It's rough getting off the fingers. But between the Zappa Gap and, uh, you know, small pins that's not going to go out the other side, you can, uh, let's see. Yeah, it's long enough. You can, uh, Jab some pins in there to kind of kind of help it out. Even that slight angle so you can penetrate a little bit better. Although a lot of this is going to get whittled off. Might be better to use longer pins actually for this of the neck and material being so thick yeah that's what i do these longer pins will penetrate this thicker neck and material and will still do its job yeah that's the way to go good to have several sizes 
short ones and long ones. Seeing if I go straight, you know, just straight down the middle, there's not going to be no problem when I try to carve the nega material. So that's, that's what I'm thinking about. When I'm putting these pins in is two or three more. Don't need many that super glue is going to hold. And the neck's not going to bend back. That's about the only difference between a goblin and a strutting. I mean, between a, yeah, between a goblin and a strutting is the neck. You know, the wings and the tail feather does the same thing. So... That's pretty darn good right there. I may put one more towards the base of the neck. Perfect naked material. Now you can see what I have to do as far as whittling. Not going to be that hard. Okay, so... Since I want to come up with this, I'm going to cut a little bit on this side. Kind of a vague looking sort of V. Don't want to take much off. Not much at all, because it's... I probably want to go at least to the... Kind of keep them with that V taper as much as possible. Okay, so that's kind of got one side of it. And uh, do the other side. And the bottom has got to be I'm talking about a half inch diameter. You can get a measuring tape and measure it. Let's see. Yeah, why not? Get our measuring tape. Uh, the bottom is exactly three quarters. So just make sure my bottom is three quarters. It's still at about one inch, uh, about one eighth of an inch lacking. So just do the V on the other side, take off as much that about that much. Well, you can kind of see this is what we sort of got uh, getting pretty close. I got to work on the top a little bit more. Well, let's see. What we got up top is one and yeah, too much. Okay, so all I do is keep whittling it down until I get it and I'll be done with it. I'll get back with you when I get it done. So here's what I got so far. I'm debating. I may leave this in, this insert. Um, usually it's like uh, like about four inches from the bottom of the wall to the body. Um, the magic number for me on the naked material is like nine and three eighths or nine and a half. 
Then of course, usually I dremel, you know, about four inches or so out of the out of the neck, and it's just always worked good for me. You know, I can eyeball the length and everything, and so that's what I usually do: is go with a neck and material length of about nine and three eighths, and then I cut it to size from there. It's just like a good starting point for me. Yeah, as far as the mounting process, it's just like you do a strutting or a flying. And, uh, yeah, I've already got it on video once. You know, as far as how you mount the bird, you do it just like you would a strutting or flying. The only thing is the head posture is different. The neck doesn't go back and then down. It just goes straight out. Other than that, you mount just like a strutting turkey. But so I'll get back to you, you know, when I start putting the base on. I mean, when I start putting it on the base, uh, I'll get back with you. I'm fixing to put him on like a temporary base before I put him on the limb. And I measured the limb, the thickness of the artificial limb. It was four inches. Okay, I went ahead and cut my 3 16th inch wire. Um, the limb is exactly four inches thick at its thickest part. It's four inches thick right through here. And so I figured if I go about three and a half, three and three quarters, something like that. I think I went maybe a little bit over three and a half. But what I'm getting at is these are going to shoot into the temporary base. And after it dries, they're going to be set so far apart. And I've kind of come up with about, about four inches apart, I think is pretty good. So... After I drill two holes that are four inches apart on my face, then when it's ready to mount, I'll drill uh, two holes four inches apart straight down in the center on this limb. I measure two holes four inches apart on this, and then I'll drill only two holes four inches apart which is my temporary base. Okay, I've got a big old long drill bit. Um, so I want my feet four inches apart. So I centered it uh, uh, two holes, four inches apart. Well, not two holes, but two marks, four inches apart. And there's the center line. So two inches that way and two inches that way is four. So I'm going to go pretty much just straight down. Supposed to simulate him being on a limb. That's pretty good, but I think I want his legs actually back a little. About like that. About like that. Then 
one of these forwards. Just a hair. That was pretty good just like that. So, sometimes they crook in a little bit like they're, I guess chicken legged is the right word. The main thing is I got a little bit of bend. That'll work. Just like a strutting turkey, um, just like I showed everything on a strutting turkey, I mean, there is some differences, obviously. But I still like to feel the wings out a little bit. You know, I don't want them in. I kind of like them bowing out a little bit. You know, just a little. So I'll uh, go right where the, usually where the, this last tail feather ends. And I'll Go into the body just a little. Don't have to be far because it'd just be aggravation trying to get it out. Okay, then I want all these feathers to ride over. So, yeah, to me that looks pretty good. I may uh, go just a little bit. Yeah, something like that. And then I can spread these primaries out. You know, I'll be tickled to death. Just to have it like that. Okay, uh, I'm kind of coming up with an idea, I think. It's about like how a lot of other people do it, but I think I'll get like a piece of cardboard. See, I've got a, a big pin going through the end of the cardboard, got the end staple. And what I want to do is go pretty much right where I put that wire. I guess I could just use tape and tape all this, but... Probably get it to stand up better. That's how I kind of want it. I need a cardboard here, is what I'm thinking. Maybe throw some pins to it or something. Something like that. Now what I'm gonna do is do these right here. Those kind of kind of one. I got two pieces of cardboard, and I just staple the ends of them. And then I want to separate my primaries out, make them look really good. I want them to go back farther, but I also want them to spread a little bit. So I'm just Trying to evenly space them, like so forth, and then going through, just 
space them a little bit, but don't want a whole lot of gaps or anything. But. That's kind of what I've got going on right there. You get that there. I mean, a strutting turkey. Pretty much everything's the same except the position of the neck, you know. That's pretty much it. And this will go here. Make sure this is off. Now I want it to kind of kind of be kind of flush with that too. I can go there. There we go. Let's see, like that. There we go. There we go. That ought to hold it right there. I'm going to do the other side the same way. Okay, here just uh, we kind of work the feathers forwards. Slowly watch him as he drives. Eventually those quills will catch that polyfill and they'll stay upright. Right the breast, all of them. Okay, some of these feathers, the very back feathers, the ones that ride like right on the tail, I'm trying to get those suckers to mat down if they're uh, if they're not flat. Try to flatten those things out. Some right in here, trying to bounce up. Sometimes you got to do different things in different birds. A lot of times I don't even have to do that step, but it just depends. Yeah, I think I've got it about here all I want it. I eyeballed it a little bit. It was way out here. So, uh, yeah, I cut some of the necking material off. Got a little bit of glue here. Just gonna put some in the wattles and around. And you should flush right up. I hope it does. Oh, yeah. It flushes up pretty good right there. And all this naked material will come forwards. A lot of times you can pull some skin forwards with uh, pins. Look right here. Pull a lot of skin forwards. That'll help. I may have to make it a little shorter for it's over with. Like, kind of like it where it's at, but I may have to go in a little bit more. Okay, I think I'm going to stick with that as far as where the feathers go. Yeah, just like on the flying bird mount. Um, you can see like skin on the side. 
some of it can actually tuck and uh, that comes in handy see how it can kind of tuck in that's uh that's pretty good it'll uh kind of tuck in a little bit then you can uh put a pin on it Yeah, right here. Just push it in. So make sure that's behind. Yeah, I'm using these little pins. I'll tuck first if I can, if at all possible. And then I'll come back with a you know, with a pin. And these are short pins, so they're not gonna go all the way through the neck. You just go all the way around. Oh, about every quarter inch or so. Put your pin. I'll put them in first before I bury them down. That way I'll know where I've got pins and where I don't have pins. As I'm working. One up there. And we go around. Make sure you got no pins in there. The heads are so small. You push them in and push them in kind of deep and it will kind of bury them where you can't really see anything.
Okay, then yeah. You're going down here. Push them all the way in. The insert material is a little bit harder than the naked material, but you can still get them, get them in and bury them suckers. Push me in kind of deep, bury that head a little bit without going all the way through. do the other side the same way <clears throat> okay I've got got some stuff called uh, looks like uh, says bird feed injection fluid and uh, let's get my syringe down in there pull back on the plunger start you know injecting in the toes and everything you can get up you can get up under uh, get up under these toes and fill them plumb full with this bird injection stuff You can actually wash your feet swell up, or their toes, I mean. Okay, that's already coming out of the bottom of the foot. Do the same thing to this one. Just get up under there. Oh, I didn't get up quite far enough. Yeah, them toes, you know, I can there, watch the bottom of the toes swell up. So I kind of, I just get up under that padding, it goes in pretty easy, relatively easy. So I just kind of pump it full. That's cool. And you know, like places where you might not have got real good. You know, sometimes there's places like in elbows on the wings where it's a little bit meaty, or there might be a little bit of something else in there that you couldn't quite get to. Uh, this stuff will work to kind of help preserve it. And. But that's, that's how you get it. And you just uh, do all the toes that way. 
and uh, just try to get everything that'll go because it's a good preservative. See right there, I even got the webbing a little bit. So, and you do the other side the same way. You just get up under the toes, and you can pump that uh, syringe full of burning injection fluid right in there. And any other places where you feel like you couldn't like completely flesh out or something, might not be a bad idea to use some. Okay, places like right there, there these there's like small three feathers that were like sticking out. And uh yeah, there's a little bit unruly. So I just carded it and put some pins in. And you can do a great job preening uh places where it looks like you're seeing some downy feathers. While it's still not dry, you can adjust these feathers and cover a lot of that stuff so you don't have to worry about trying to, you know, snip it off later. Yeah, a lot of times I'll try to... See, these feathers can go over this. You want these feathers to overlap the front of the wing. Uh, that helps. Some of these can... Some things can be kind of put in place a little bit. I guess is the right word. And if they're a little unruly, you can throw some tape on it, too. You've got so many options, so many things you can do here to, you know, clean them up, make them look like a cleaner-looking mount, I guess is the right word. A lot of it is just uh, feather placement, you know, covering up a lot of stuff. A lot of neat things you can do with uh, tape and cardboard. Okay, these little... It's not too bad on this side. Not too bad on this side. Um, the other side was much worse. Uh, these three feathers right here, I had no control. It was way out over here. And a lot of it is due to the method I use. I, I, uh, you know, I run wires to my wings. I didn't run them all the way through to the very end this time. And I, actually, I'm glad I didn't. See some of these that are in? These will, if I have to, uh, use a little tape. Get these things to do what I want them to do. See if I can just stretch them out a little bit. Get them to kind of do what they, what you want them to do. Okay, these are out a little bit. I don't want to interfere with the breath feathers where they're going to go up. But I want these to, you know, definitely... about right in there we go in between some quills like right there so that pin goes through those quills it'll hold it'll keep it from uh, dropping back then you just uh, kind of hold it and put you another one in here somewhere try not to poke yourself just add, gives it a little bit more support. I haven't had a look finding a place where this pin will go up here anywhere. It's all, it's all bone and quill, I guess. Let's try down here. Yep, nothing. Okay, so I can take that if I want to. Kind of get it to hold. So I can live with that. And get these where they're not puffing up on top. They, uh, preening and feather placement is big on these.
because a lot of times after you mount it, things are just all over the place. And you'd be surprised what feather placement can do for stuff like that. These feathers together. You can cover up damage and you can uh, bring feathers out that otherwise wouldn't show. So there's a lot of things you can do. Just cover things up where you don't have to preen. Helps out a lot. You can bring these feather ends together by preening. in. A lot of things you can do. Do whatever you got to do to get these feathers to stay where you want them to. Tape or whatever you got to do. And once you get him how you want him, well, let that sucker dry. Sometimes feathers get covered up by other feathers and you thought they were damaged and uh, but they weren't, they were there. So just kind of pretty them up like that. Oh, right here I actually put a little bit of cotton under there. Some people will make an incision and put it in there, but yeah, I just put it up under the feathers. Just swell it up. You know, I can always take the cotton out later once the feathers dry. So, that's kind of what I got going on there. And then, uh, yeah, just keep on preening everything. Kind of pretty it up as good as humanly possible. That's the name of the game.
Prosit printing can do to get rid of a lot of these downy feathers. It really can. Just kind of help them to overlap. Yeah, I never just let him dry and leave him alone. I'm always pretty much anything I mount. I'm always tinkering with them while they're drying, you know. You know, adjusting things. Yeah, little, little things here and there. As things dry, they get more sturdy where you can put them where they need to be. Or you might have to tape them to keep them where you had them or Whatever you got to do, maybe even repinning, depending on what it is, what you're working on. Up here on top, I have been known to use cotton up there in between the feathers. If they look like they're wanting to lay a lot, and I don't want to sit there and overwork them, you know. Because when you overwork something, you can uh, break it down, actually. But... As the skin dries and shrinks, uh, the quills were going to go up to that, you know, that layer of polyfill I got on there. And these feathers will start staying up really good. And uh, probably on this one, I don't think I even need to help it out with a little bit of cotton in between, you know, the feathers. But I have done that. You can still get it to look good. Just, you know, maybe between every feather or two, uh, throw you a little bit of cotton down in there to... Kind of help it out as it dries but it's probably better just to you know rake it forwards you know once or twice a day this is only the second day and the feathers are already standing so this one's on its way to being a really good mount it's been a couple weeks i know my turkey's good and dry i'm gonna go ahead and start Taking the pins off, and then I'll reuse these if I still can. I'll reuse them. Yeah, they spaced out these primaries real good. See, basically what you got is you got the main part that comes off the body. I guess you could say like where the shoulder is. And then it bends. It goes like, it bends up like this. And these primaries... Or like that like the fingers or, uh, or like the primaries they're going back so it goes this way that way and then this last joint kicks back so it's it's doing this that's what it's doing and uh how you do a strutting or a goblin turkey yeah you just pull these pull all these pins you use you reuse these if you can if you can't that's okay too so we've got a few t-pins here and not t-pins but uh, yeah these right here come off real good kind of like how I wanted it yeah there's a t-pin up in there and I pulled it out so it was holding these so, uh, I'll do the other side the same way. Use a little cotton to kind of help me out a little bit. You don't need to do this. You can rake it forwards good enough and just rake it forwards once or twice a day. The skin shrinks anyway as it dries. And all this will come out. take all that stuff out if you decide to use it. Got my staple puller. I'm gonna pull out all my cardboard. Or I mean uh, all my staples. like you do any turkey tail mount. Go ahead and take out all the staples. Oh yeah, I think I've even got a little cotton up under here. But it's not in the way. I might leave it. But I got, yeah, I got some cotton under there. Mm -hmm. 
and I can pull it out if I want to. That's all I had. Right. And you could have left it in, it'd have been fine. Okay, you got a little bit of tape here. Here again, grab you some and the faster you yank, the better off you are. For whatever reason, yeah, the faster you yank, they get in a good position where you can yank real quick, you're just a lot better off. Got a little bondo here, itching it up real good. This is just where I guess where they uh, send it in, you know. And it don't take much. I don't want to put a lot, but there is a little clearance in there. So I just put it all around. And I think it goes in like this. Yeah. There you go. It's in there real good. Bono let it sit up for a while and it'll never come back out. Okay, just like I was strutting turkey, uh, you know, I kind of like a, a little bit in the back. I don't want it just flat looking. So I use a little bit of wire just like I do on a strutting turkey. And yeah, it's right here. Should come out relatively easy. Yeah, there we are. I intentionally didn't put them in too deep. There we go. Okay. Come on down. All right. Right there, that's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. Hold that for a second. Lift that up just a bump. Okay, we got that. Is that a bump? Yeah. We got that. Okay. I got the marks about four inches apart. What I'll do is install the bird for now, but I'll you leave the temporary base for ease of transfer when he wants to take it to his house. Okay. Going down with it. Should be able to. It made me go tilt more back towards you. He's all good enough. Okay. Yeah, just hold the base and I'll have the rest. No, ah, no, no, stop, stop. You're hitting the wall with his tail. Uh oh. Hey, here. I'm bringing it over this way. Okay, go ahead. I'm good. Oh, there he is. I've let go. Yeah. Good shape. I use wire instead of a threaded rod. And uh, the supply company told me I had some options. And one is to shoot a, th uh, a threaded screw up by the wire to kind of help secure it where it's not going to go anywhere. And I pre-cut my wire already, so I didn't have to worry about uh, sticking down below the piece of wood. So I get up underneath, and my goal is to run up beside the wire. Now what 
it's going to do, it's going to tighten, tighten it down where it's not going to go anywhere. And you do the same thing to the other side. All it is is a screw running up beside the wire and it's not going to go anywhere. You run it up by the other leg. He ain't going nowhere. Well, here's how you mount a gobbling turkey on a limb. Oh, just wanted to add, huh? um, like where these holes are, yeah. um, you can cover them up by putting a little bit of moss. I like to use sheet moss and go around the feet and just put some all over the limb. And you can cover up a lot of what would show. Okay, I just want to take things down. I could have done this on the temporary base as well. Uh, but what I'm getting at is uh, uh, just control your overspray. And I'll tape around the legs too to keep paint off the feathers. You know, up here where the feathers meet. Uh, right there. And basically, uh, it's natural flesh. And then from natural flesh, I go to gill red. And from that, I, I might even throw pearl on. A little bit of pearl to give it a pearly look. Because a lot of times I see it. Uh, like right in here So I will I'll incorporate a little pearl and then from that I'll go to rich brown and then dark brown and You know the legs are different this this bird had particularly kind of dark legs uh, The last turkey I did uh, legs were almost like pink so they can differ and uh, Just let you uh, let your turkey be your guide on how you paint his legs, but don't overpaint them. You can make them have the painted look, and uh, that's even worse. So just uh, keep that in mind. You know, the spurs and stuff, a lot of times I'll darken them up, and uh, I'll just use dark brown, my last color for that. Oh, yeah, you see places like where there's a little bit of unruly feathers? Feel free to snip them off, you know, to kind of clean things up a little bit and make them look better you know if you see a place where downy feathers are sticking out or something um yeah you can definitely uh you know pretty them up a little bit just get in there and snip them off and uh neaten him up but he looks pretty good